So the name of the procedure is an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. It's a procedure, essentially one of my favorite sur surgeries because patients do fantastic from it. It's in the line of minimally invasive surgery. It's a really small incision. I go on the front portion of the neck here and we essentially get down to the spine to decompress the spinal cord and also nerves. So ACDF is the name of the procedure. These are the patient's x-rays here. It shows that he has severe arthritis and collapse at multiple levels in his neck. Severe osteophytes, which are bone spurs. Uh, this is the this is the AP view here, or anterior posterior view, and also the lateral view. We're looking at it from the side. When we are young, the disc or the cushions in between the bones, they, they give us space and give the nerve space. But as we get older, those discs degenerate and they, they um, turn dark on MRI images, and that's called disc desiccation. And patients get what's called disc degeneration disease, which can be very painful. Another sequelae of that is that it leads to arthritis. When you lose the cushions, it's just bone on bone, and that can be very painful. So the goal of this procedure is not only to remove that diseased disc, but also uh, fuse those levels because of that, um, the arthritis, and we call it spondylosis. So it's just moving quite a bit. So these are his x-rays. This is his MRI image here. This is the base of the brain here. This is the spinal cord coming down. Uh, this is C2, C3, 4, 5. So this cut here is looking at C4, C5. He has severe central stenosis right in the middle and also what's called foraminal stenosis. So the nerves, as they're leaving the spinal cord at every level, they're getting pinched. This is the next level down at C5, C6. 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see this severe collapse at this level, the arthritis. Uh, and the subsequent um, compression of the spinal cord and nerves. Uh, this patient is having severe neck and arm pain, um, so the goal of the surgery is to help uh, alleviate some of that. And this bottom level at C6, C7, severe compression, um, and the foramen here, this nerve on the uh, this side of the spine is getting pinched, and severe on the contralateral side as well. So. This is a fantastic surgery, one of my favorite. I love the anatomy in the neck. This patient um, will be in the hospital for about a day or so. We'll get him up with physical therapy after surgery and start walking the same day of surgery and then go home the following day. All right, so for anterior cervical discectomy infusion, this is the front of the spine here. This is the back of the spine. These are the cushions between the bones here, the intervertebral disc, and these are the cushions that wear out with age and with trauma and with time. If you lose the cushion or the integrity of those discs, you have pressure on these nerves here. So this patient has foraminal stenosis, he has pinching of these nerves, and he also has um, pressure on the spinal cord. So the goal of this surgery and the plan is to go in and remove all of this disc here. I place some distractors across these bones here to open it up, and then I replace that with a spacer. And then I put a plate and screws on top of it to fuse it together. So. Any questions for me? You understand what we're gonna be doing? You got several levels in your neck that are pretty degenerated and collapsed down. The nerves are severely tight. So we have to take the pressure off of them. All right. We'll get you back there shortly, okay? Thank you. All right, so we're about to get started here soon. Um, this patient has had pain for a number of years. Uh, he came to my office, we tried some injections, physical therapy, some pain meds. Um, none of those things work. So, which, if someone has severe compression of their nerves and uh, of their spinal cord also, you know, trying those things is certainly reasonable, but a lot of times, uh, those conservative options may not work given the amount of stenosis. Stenosis is tightening of the spinal cord, and that's what he has, and it's pinching on the spinal cord. A normal spinal cord diameter, or the space for the spinal cord is, for, for a male, 12 to 14 millimeters. Um, his is like five or six, so uh, we're gonna take the pressure off his spinal cord. I'm gonna go in the front of his neck here, and um, it's, a, it's a really uh, fun surgery to do and it's a really successful surgery. Patients do great, so uh, we're gonna get started here soon. Just 
made our <coughs> incision on the anterior portion of the neck. I'm just going through the, the muscle called the uh, platysma. And that's kind of our, one of our landmarks. So <coughs> this is the uh, sternocleidoid mastoid muscle right here. And I'm finding the uh, plane between the esophagus and trachea and the uh, sternocleidoid and mastoid muscle. That's the plane that I'm gonna go through to get down to the anterior portion of the spine. So that quickly, you know, 45 seconds, I'm, I can already feel the front part of the spine there. And I feel the vertebral artery, or the carotid artery, I'm sorry. I'm feeling for it and I feel it, it's lateral to me. That lets me know I'm in the right position. All right, x-ray. So I put a needle into the disc space, and right now we're going to localize and see what level that we're at. You have to come down, come down. distal just a tad bit. Okay, so three, four, five, six, seven. All right, thank you. Save that. Go right. ignore. Right now I'm just getting my exposure <clears throat> at all the levels. I'm up at C4, C5 now, just uh, cleaning off the soft tissue. She's holding the uh, esophagus and the trachea through her way. And I have the carotid artery and the central plateau and mastoid muscle kind of my way over here. Pull towards you. A bit. There you go. Huge bone spurs in here. Okay. All right, go back down distal. <laughs> so we have all of our levels exposed. Right now we're going to put some retractors in so we can see his level is severely collapsed down. So color will let us know what size. These are called caspar pins. Uh, basically, these are used to distract open, <laughs> distract open the disc space. Take a shot of that. Are you able to uh, lighten it up a little bit for me? This is a distractor here that we're going to use to uh, open up the disc space. Have a mallet, please. So we're opening up the collapse level that's there on the x-ray shot. Now I can see a lot more. It was collapsed first with a lot of bone spurts. I can see um, into the disc space a lot better. Pituitary. So all this bone that we're removing from the bone spurs, um, it's also called osteophytes, we're going to use it for uh, graft, or it's called autograft to help with our fusion. Uh, so we mix it with some synthetic bone graft, Here's a little bit more here. This is a high speed drill, I'm using a foot pedal here, basically uh, do some carpentry to the uh, bone, all the bone spurs, remove it, form a nice right rectangle so when we put our cage in. It uh, goes in pretty nicely and looks really good on x-ray. This is the cage here, or spacer. Amateur. It's um, a peak, which is plastic. It has bone graft on the inside, synthetic bone graft. This is gonna go in that space that we removed the, the disc from. Yep. Shoot. 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 All right, perfect. Save that and go north, please. All right, I need a cast for pin driver empty. This is a ronger here. So I'm using this to remove all the bone spurs that are on the front of the spine. You can save that bone right there. So all this that I'm pulling out of there is disc, the generated disc. There's a whole bunch on top of the spinal cord. It's pretty severe compression here. So we just got all of our cages in. And now we're going to uh, put a plate and some screws in to hold everything in place. This is a plate here that we're gonna put into the spine. Just gonna hold those levels in place to so fuse them.
So this is the length of the incision here, about three and a half centimeters. So really small incision. We were able to take the pressure off and uh, decompress those levels there. Stitch, please. So right now we're just uh, closing, placing uh, some sutures. I left the drainage catheter. I left the uh, drainage catheter in his neck to uh, collect any fluid that may accumulate. And we'll pull that catheter in the morning before he goes home. So he'll stay in the hospital for approximately uh, 12 hours or so or less. All right, so these are the uh, post-operative films here. This is what it looks like from the side or lateral view. This is what it looks like, AP view. This is the plate and screws and also the cages, they're spacers. So he has a lot more space now. Uh, the nerves are decompressed, the spinal cord is decompressed. Um, he'll stay in the hospital for about 12, 13 hours, go home in the morning, and uh, yeah, off to recovery. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.